exhausted. Everyone, wonderful. Then we're all on the same page. Oh, you guys, my, my beautiful, beautiful friends and followers here on YouTube, this has been a month. Let me tell you, this has been a month. As a lot of you already know from my past videos, I am a disabled woman and a disabled business owner, and sometimes my body just doesn't want to work normally. I had every intention of getting out a much larger, more in-depth, historical, scripted video this week, but many things have hindered that. For one, this video in particular, although it is written and prepared and ready to go, involves more standing and moving than normal, and I dislocated both my hip and my ankle, so sitting suits me much better today. Another really fun thing that happened to me this month is that my computer completely crashed. It just absolutely crashed on me, and in the process, I lost so much writing I've been working on lately. Oh, it was just terrible. It just absolutely corrupted my backup files. I lost hours and hours of work, things I've been working on for weeks, and some of those are YouTube videos, some of those are blogs, bigger projects, so it's a mess. So not only have I been more exhausted than usual, but I've been trying to catch up on that. So there are some scripts that are in the works that have been in the works, but <laughs> we've experienced a little setback. But I know you guys are all wonderful, and I know that a lot of you like a good unboxing, so that is what we are going to do today. This box is from Freeman and the Fugate Oddities, and this actually is the same business I purchased my guillotine from. And I know oh so many of you did enjoy my guillotine video. So I see this business posting a lot of pretty nice pieces of hair art. I don't think, now don't hold me to this. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I've made purchases from them before, but I think this is my first actual hair purchase from them. So I am quite excited. I definitely should have gotten a bigger scissor or a box cutter for this one. It's very sturdily taped. Now, while I am opening this, if any of you are interested in maybe some more personal, more informal uh, pieces of content, there are a couple of options for you. Uh, specifically, this month, I restarted my blog on my website. I started a blog years ago, and unfortunately, at one point, I just lost track of it, and I just, I just stopped doing it. And I started doing YouTube videos instead, but I decided this month that I am starting the blog back up. I talked a little bit about my computer issues, some of the things that make me happy when things aren't going so well, a little bit about disability, a little bit about how my last year went. So I've got um, a few different things up there now and more will be added on the way. I also, of course, have my Patreon. So I will put links to both of those things down in the description so you can find me in all my places if you do want extra content. My goodness, can you tell I am stalling? <laughs> I am having the hardest time opening this last little bit of tape. Okay, here we go. So, this piece, we'll keep fingers crossed that it is beautifully packaged and perfectly pristine. This is actually going to tie in really, really well with the video that will be coming out next week, or shall I make an addendum, will be coming out next week pending any unforeseen tragedies. Okay, got a good solid coat of bubble wrap. We love bubble wrap around here. So next week, I'm going to be talking more about palette work, which is the technique 
where you make usually flat pictures, almost like a hair painting that's worked on a palette, thus palette work. And my first video on palette work, it was one of my first videos on this channel. I'll put a link up uh, if you guys wanna go look at that. It is one of my most watched videos to date, so I'm very excited to do this video next week where I'm gonna be using a lot of new example and reference pieces as we talk about palette work. Oh no, oh no. Oh, I sneezed. Oh, but the antique is safe. We're good. Okay, this is a tiny one. I didn't realize it was this tiny when I purchased it. Okay. First, as always, seller's information is gonna go right down below, Freeman and Puget. It's beautiful. Okay, so this is one that I had to purchase because it's just so weird. It's tinier than I expected, but I think it's really, really cute. I will come a little closer so you guys can see it. So, as you can tell, this is not a full palette work piece alone. It's kind of a hybrid of palette work and wire work. So the wire work are these little flowers right here. They're shaped with wire, usually around a knitting needle, depending on which technique we're working with. But the palette work, the flowers up here, these leaves, those are all <laughs> done with palette work, which it's, it's not uncommon to see palette work that is not completely flat. I, I see some people in the sort of hair work communities refer to this kind of work as flat work. Um, I personally prefer palette work because it's not always flat. There are some palette work pieces that use that technique that are used for more three-dimensional pieces with a little depth, but not usually in this way. You see, there are different ways of doing it, but you can sort of put a bit of cotton under the hair to give it sort of just like a raised bump look. There are different ways that you can give it that effect, but it looks like with this one that the leaves and the flowers were created using the palette work technique, but then wires were actually wrapped around them at the base to make stems and it was all kind of mounted more like a hair wreath would be. So this is a really, really exceptionally unique piece for that reason. Oh, I have to get a better look at this. Palette work pieces and some wire work pieces are not uncommon to see in frames like this with the black border and the gold in the uh, inner, the inner oval. Um, we're gonna be talking about that a lot next week and you'll see a couple of different pieces that use the same sort of type of frame. I'll turn it around here so you can have a look. Sometimes we'll get lucky enough where you might have the name of the artist, the name of the person whose hair it is, some sort of information on the back. Um, this looks like it's just a sort of a printer label on the back, so I don't think that was supposed to be anything, but I'll take a closer look at that. You can actually see, which is kind of interesting, this, um, wire on the back so you can tell that with wire work and these sort of hair wreaths um, that it just gets sewn to the back but in this case we can see right through it and we have that string right there so this is such a cool piece you guys it's small but it's unique these techniques themselves are not original the flowers i've seen those before usually flatter and I've seen these more three-dimensional, well, I guess they're all three-dimensional. I'm gonna have to find new language to describe this one to you, you guys. It's just very unique to mix these two different techniques in this way. And I think it's just beautiful. Take a look at that detail in those flowers. 
Oh, I am so delighted by this. It is absolutely stunning. So I am not going to be talking about this one in the next video about palette work that comes out because that video is already planned, written. I have the pieces I'm gonna reference for it. And besides, you're seeing this one here today anyway. So if I happen to learn anything more about this piece, I'll make sure to update you all. But in the absence of a name, or an artist, um, chances are I won't find anything new about this. And that's really just the reality of hair work. A lot of these pieces remain anonymous, both the person it's commemorating as well as the person who made it. Sometimes we'll get lucky and we'll have a bit of information, but that is far less common than having a totally anonymous piece like this. So for me as a collector and as a practitioner of hair art, I really try to look for either pieces that are well documented or pieces that are particularly unique or really immaculate artistry. And I would consider this to definitely be unique and pretty solid artistry as well. Some of these are really, really well done. And I don't know if you can see, but this is not uncommon. There are a couple of little beads and a couple of loose hairs that have fallen to the bottom there. And that's that's fine, that's not gonna to be too big of an issue. I mean, especially if we were to hang this somewhere or prop it up, um, you probably won't be seeing that deep down unless you're really, really eyeballing it. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at these clashing blacks. Shame on me. No, this is actually uh, unrelated to hair, but related to mourning. This is an actual Victorian cape, so this, is a very old ribbon and you can see the black is kind of starting to fade away and we have some brown there. Whereas this morning bonnet is newly made. It is a, a replica that a modern artisan has made. And you know what? I'll go ahead and put her information down in the comments as well. I got this as a gift uh, from a very good friend for Christmas this year. And I did not know about this wonderful, wonderful bonnet maker and historical clothing uh, creator uh, until then. So I'm really delighted to know about her work as well. So I will pop that all down below. The other interesting thing that I wanna point out about this one is that since these are two totally different techniques, these palette work flowers in leaves do actually use an adhesive. At the time it would have been gum Arabic uh, would have been the adhesive used. But in order to keep this shape and to <laughs> allow it to stay three-dimensional and, and keep its shape, it would need a lot of adhesive. So those are glued to death, I would say, no pun intended. But um, these wirework flowers, that's the standard gimp technique. You'll see that in almost every hair wreath is this type of technique. And those don't need adhesive at all. That is purely just, I lost all my words, you guys. I told you I was exhausted. Did it, I meant it. It's just working it with the fingers and wire and hair and maybe a needle. I also just love so much that it has several different colors of hair. I think I spot at least three different colors of hair. There's a blonde, a brunette, and sort of a whiter hair. So I just love the contrast of having several different colors in the same piece. So that's always something that I also love to look out for. On that note, I thank you all so much for being here. I am going to definitely talk more about palette work next week, so make sure that you subscribe, give this video a like for me, comment and let me know what you think of this piece. Tell me if you've ever seen something like this where they're mixing both wire work and palette work to make a sort of wreath. Because I've, I've seen it done in different ways than this before, but this is a particularly unique way. And now I want to try making something like this. So let me know if you'd like to see a video where I talk about sort of my journey to try to recreate something like this. And we'll see if we can't make that happen in the future, if that's something you're interested in, of course. On that note, I want to give a, an enormous Thank you to my supporters on Patreon before I forget how to say every single word that's in my brain. Oh, I meant to you guys, I am so, so tired.
But truthfully, my patrons really, really help me to keep going, especially on particularly difficult months like this, and I cannot thank you all enough for your support. On that note, I'm gonna go find somewhere to put her. Have one last look. My precious. I don't know why I'm doing that. I've never watched that movie. <laughs> In fact, I have watched so few movies, you guys. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, nothing. If you ask me if I've ever seen a movie, the answer is probably no. Except for very specific weird hair-related movies. That's a great segue to end. Over on Patreon the last few months, we have been doing movie nights as one of the many rewards that you can get by joining our community over there where I lay down in my quarantine blanket fort and I watch and live react to some kind of hair related movie and I give you all my thoughts as they come. It's a really good time. The movies are usually pretty weird and I think they're only gonna get weirder from here so you definitely don't wanna miss it. Most recently I just did Madeline Lost in Paris, which yes, it is a cartoon. Yes, it is a childhood favorite for many, but they also talk quite a lot about human hair lace. And if you ever watched that movie as a child and thought, did they actually make hair out of lace? Hair out of lace, lace out of hair, rather. Absolutely they did, that is definitely a thing that you can make with hair. So I had so much fun re-watching that as an adult and sharing my thoughts about historical hair lace. So head on over, patreon.com slash neverforgotten to join our fun, weird movie nights. Okay, I need to go to bed before I just keep blabbering. Bye, love you.